Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful back in the studio today. The power's back on. So sorry if I abruptly ended my video yesterday that I was recording. Uh, the power went out and it got difficult to see what I was doing. So I went ahead and ended it and I did have a, I posted it today and had a request to continue with my progress. So I am going to keep sharing. I probably won't do everything on camera, but I want to at least uh, take you through the steps that I'm working on to do the spine cover. So if you have not watched before and you're just finding my channel for the first time, welcome. I hope if you enjoy this video, you'll give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. If you click the little bell, you'll get a notification when I post something new. I'm working on French style journals and I have four going. So if you have not watched this playlist from the beginning there will be a link down below and in the description and then also a continuing list of any other videos that i reference or uh, materials that i've used that sort of thing so you can always find them so i have four journals going like i said and yesterday i started the spine cover for my largest the original journal that I was going to be doing. And I started out with a book that had a spine, but did not have a spine that I liked. It's just plain. And so I wanted to do a cover for that. If you've been following along, you know that I'm basing this on a digital kit that I created when I was asked to do this French style journal. And in that kit, I have my the original uh, journal that the person saw that they wanted me to kind of copy was a journal that I had made using a vintage book and it had this fleur de lis pattern on it. So I printed, I made the digital in two pieces front and back. That way you have more room to adjust the size and I didn't have the spine intact to include that anyway. So it's going to require doing some kind of fabric cover for the spine if you do the, do it in this way. So in my case, I decided I'm starting on this one that I actually printed out one of the collages from my kit and used that. And so I've printed out another one. Uh, I did a video about doing this uh, two videos ago, I think. And I'm gonna be using this on one of the smaller ones. It was printed out on a tan fabric and this was printed out on a white fabric. So I'm going to continue showing you this one, but I'm also going to be working on the other ones because I've decided I do want to put some different fabrics onto this and it may be scraps from these other uh, fabrics that I have printed and I want to use them for uh, maybe tear up pieces for the other spines and then the remnants I'll use for this. So I'm back to the one that I started in the video yesterday. And I just wanted to show you where I'm at and then I'll kind of get to tearing up some other things. So the first step that I had done was I wanted to attach it to this cotton twill fabric uh, so that this is what gets glued down and I won't have glue seep seeping through. So this one you can see my, my spine is going to actually be this size, but I've left it larger because I want this rose to be kind of cut out after I do some embroidery on it. And then I'll end up having it kind of continue on to the front of this cover. And I don't think I'm gonna do the other ones that way. I like to do every one a little bit different. So that's kind of a unique thing that I wanted to just share different ideas. Okay, so for the rest of this one, I want to maybe, like I said, add some pieces of fabric, maybe some lace, some other things. So yesterday I had shown you how I went ahead and tacked, just tacked this down after pinning it. Um, with some heavier upholstery thread. And you can see now that I've removed all of that thread. And I have done my just my straight running stitch, kind of a hidden stitch, where on the front it's a tiny, tiny little stitch that you won't see very well, and, but it kind of just connects everything together. So now I have my, my two pieces and I don't have to have lots of pins. So you can see I just took the smallest stitch on the front and then went about an inch and just made rows and did that all the way through my piece. Uh, so far, all I've done on this one is to do kind of a little um, stitch here for the stem of the rose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you know do some more on the leaves and things. Uh, but I wanted to kind of share some ideas and things to make this kind of figuring out what you wanna do maybe a little easier. So yesterday I showed you 
um, this friction pen from Pilot, and I have a link in the description for that. This is an erasable pen. So if you want to draw, say I want to continue the vine uh, or this uh, rose and make it look like a vine through my piece, I can kind of just draw that, maybe draw where I want flowers and leaves and that sort of thing with this pen that's erasable. You're going to end up stitching over it anyway. Um, so you don't necessarily have to erase your lines, but if you put one somewhere where you didn't want it, you'd want to be able to get rid of that. So uh, I'll be using that. And then one other thing that I think is kind of handy to do is if you don't really know what you want, what kind of design you don't want to draw right onto your piece, is to take a full color photocopy of it. And then that way I can kind of draw on this first some different ideas that I have before I stitch it. Um, some of the stitching I do, I won't even, you know, draw lines with this pen. But if I put them on here, I can kind of get some ideas. So let me put this aside for just a second. In this case, the first thing that I would want to do is maybe find the other fabrics. Now, this is not a piece. This was just floating around on my desk. But I could, you know, put a patch here or there and then embroider on that. And I might do that even with this piece. This just has some a little bit of rust on it. And so that might be kind of cute to use. Um, this is a piece from the end papers uh, that I must have torn for some reason, and I'm not sure. Oh, I used it for the inside of the spine cover, I think, um, when I did my stitching. So on this one, I have that um, the cheesecloth that's printed, so I actually should have some of that floating around here too. So here's the piece of that. So that would be cute too, to maybe just do a couple different things. So I'm gonna try, let's see, I do like having little frayed edges. This gets a little curly when you tear it, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So maybe I take a little piece of this. And you see how that kind of curls up, but I don't mind that at all. And because that's kind of see-through, I can lay these out maybe just on here. You'll still see through it. So that might be actually kind of nice. Maybe that's a little large. Maybe I'll cut that down a little bit. And you can see that gets really kind of scrunched up, but you can just use your fingers and pull that out. And I might not even mind some of these longer threads. Maybe we'll see but I could just maybe add something like that. Maybe I'll trim these off. So that could be really cute. And then maybe a piece of this. Now this has that edge from the, the printed edge. That might be a little thin to try to tear, but I'm gonna try. And you can even save little pieces like that and just, you know, make a little bow and stitch on there or something. And then maybe see if I can get myself another frayed edge. Okay, so that might be cute too. And you can just kind of mess it up a little more if you want. Let's see, what else do I have? I have this little scrap that was left over. I kind of want to save this piece because I might be able to use her as a spine cover. It's not very large, but for one of those smaller books, that might look good. So let's. this is just a scrap that I can use. This is all going to get cut away, so it might be kind of nice to have a little bit of this pattern on my piece. Um, so let's just maybe try to tear this. This one is being a little stubborn.
Now, because this is going to go around my spine, I might, let me get in here a little closer, I guess. I might want to try it on my book just to kind of see where the different fabrics would fall because it would be nice if I see them on the spine if I'm storing this on a bookshelf this way. You know, maybe I want, I want to be able to see each piece. And this might be a little large. I kind of liked this one going this direction. So maybe I make, make sure it's gonna go around that corner would be cute. So maybe this one needs to be a little smaller. And kind of go this direction, let's see. Something like that. Yeah, I kind of like that, that's cute. Since the spine, it's kind of like the rose is a focal point here. And this spine, you know, I want to see all the different little pieces. I kind of like that. Let's see if that wraps around kind of where I, I want it, and it does. So I kind of like those there. And so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and stitch those on so that they don't move around because once I do my leaf, maybe I want to do this leaf on top of this other piece of fabric. So it's a good idea to get those down first. And then the same if I do continue a vine or something like that, it will be on top of these patches. So I think to do that. And, and the other thing I should mention too, in case you, ha you didn't watch the previous video, oh, and I could use this somewhere, is I'm using a the collage. So I have kind of one whole piece on my substrate. And normally with slow stitching, you actually have your substrate and then each of these pieces is patched right onto it instead of this whole piece like I did. So I'm kind of adding these decoratively, but normally you would be stitching each piece to the substrate. So if you're gonna do yours that way, it, it would be similar to what I'm gonna do here. You would you would tack each of those on and then do all of your little maybe connecting stitches that are decorative. But these were all uh, tacked on in the way that I did back here. So it would be, a, these would have been a part of this back piece, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna try to get these on here. Let's see where some pins. And because they're not put on with that hidden stitch, I could go ahead and do that, but they're, these are kind of small. So I might just go ahead and do some kind of cute stitch around the edge of it. And then it's kind of killing two birds. So I might kind of do that. So let's just kind of stick, pin these down and figure a way to go around them. Uh, let's see. A needle. So I can take, I used this thread for my stem. It might be kind of cute to use it to stitch one of these on and then I would see it. You know, it's a contrast. So let's see. Okay. So you can use, I'm using embroidery floss. You can use anything you want. Something more textural. I, this is just one strand. You can use two, three, four. I like to vary my stitching thickness so normally I would maybe use two but because this was here already as one I'm going to just use that and then um, just start and I don't know if I'm actually close enough for you to see maybe I do need to stand so I'm going to just kind of do I think a little could do a blanket stitch on this. I'm just going to be doing a little kind of straight stitch. Any distance that you want, just vary it up. And you don't have to be all precious and perfect about it. That's kind of the, the thing of slow stitching. You see, I'm not using a hoop. I'm just going to 
put those stitches in to hold this down kind of like a, a patch you would on your on your blue jeans and see it's already catching my pin so I'll get rid of that so I'm just going off of my patch and over about an eighth of an inch or so and going down into my patch and then over and if you can see that it's just creating little straight stitches and you can vary the length of those don't make them perfect Okay, so that's one little patch sewn on. And I need to do this one. And let's see. This is just a DMC 3768 thread. Just as a contrast to this one, it's got that color, sort of that color in little flowers. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and for this one I will make it thicker I'll do two strands of this one Okay, now this one I sort of did half a cross stitch, so if I wanted it to be a cross stitch, I could go back over those. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I think I want to do that up here. I like to not have exactly the same stitches, you know, multiple times, so I'm just going to leave the half. And this is some thread. I had started to do these two different colors, and then I didn't like it. But I think since I have this out, I might go ahead and just use it to stitch this down with a color. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. And this is three strands. And this one, I think I'm just going to do a running stitch. So let me start. Since that's stitched down, I'll just kind of start here.
Okay, so I have my three patches stitched on with different colors of thread, different stitches, just to kind of get that started. And then I think it'd be fun to add some lace, maybe here. I'm gonna go dig through my laces real quick and see what I can find. And you could even stitch paper to this if you wanted, you know, just some a French word and book page or something. Okay, I found a couple of pieces of things. I found this, I don't know if you can see this. It's part of a book, a French book spine. So I think that's kind of cute. Um, I kind of like this as a piece of rusty, roughly lace. And that might be kind of cute just along that top edge. And then this has a floral thing. I just like how kind of tattery it is. Okay, I'm kind of liking this little tag here, possibly. I do want that lace, I think, on the front. And then maybe this. This feels kind of dark to me, is my only thing. But maybe as I do my vines and flowers, I add a little more dark somewhere else and then it won't stand out so much to me. So I want, I do want this kind of centered though on where my spine is gonna be. Find it there. Maybe a thread that is, I think I need a fine needle for this. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue stick, I think, just to kind of Hold it where I need it. Okay, for this I chose a totally different color. It's not in my design, but it's it gives me a feeling of lighter of this rose. It's not as light and it's not as pink. I had originally thought gold. Oops, you can't see, sorry. I originally thought gold, but I'm thinking something in between just to add some light to this and some maybe darker to the rest. So this is number 3064 in DMC embroidery thread. And I think I'll just keep it a little delicate maybe with two strands maybe. Let's see. Okay, maybe one strand. I think I'm just gonna do a running stitch because I did it down there, but this will be look different because it's finer. Okay, so that's a cute little tag 
on the spine. And then I kind of liked this one here. And I think for this one, maybe I will do, or do I like the same color? I almost like the same color. You won't really see it with it anyway. Okay, that's a stitch I knew I wanted to do there from the beginning. A very large, messy cross stitch, and I just love it even more that I added the lace. So I've used the same color that I used here, um, but because it's against light, it, it's going to look different. So uh, I don't mind using the same colors. Uh, it's actually kind of nice to use them in three different places and three different stitches, and maybe in three different um, numbers of strands. Uh, but that gives you just some variety, but continuity, it, it, it gives it a cohesive look. So uh, don't be afraid to repeat things. Now I can just leave this floppy if I want. I may make it a little more tattered looking, um, but I'm thinking I might even just add some random French knots or something in here, um, just to add something, maybe even just some tiny little buttons might look really cute there. So I want to get this other piece on um, and decide that actually might not look bad to have that kind of poking out too. Let's see how that looks. And do this up top. Okay, I think. I don't mind that there. Let's see what else I have, because this is not going to be there. I kind of do like that, so let's see. So this one is 3857 DMC, and I kind of like it with that, so I'm going to add it over to here. For this one, I'm going to use two strands, and I think I might do pluses. Let's see.
Okay, you can see how that's starting to come together um, by adding, repeating colors, mixing it around. It's going to start to become more cohesive uh, the more that I add, even though it might seem kind of strange at first. It just gets better and better adding layers. It's really like your mixed media artwork just with fabric. So, you know, these are your your underpaintings and your layers and maybe your stitches are like stencils, different textures that you're adding. Um, so the more you do, the more interesting it becomes. So I'm gonna keep working on this off camera uh, just for fun and I need to sit down and then I will give you an update and anything that I do on any of the other ones as well. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something, bye.